Hello there. I'm Carolyn Rosenblatt, RN and attorney at AgingInvestor.com. I'd like to offer you a white paper, give you a little information about the problem we call undue influence. Now I'm breaking this up into two sections so you can have just a short bit to hear at any one time in your busy life. The first section tells you about undue influence and what these words actually mean. There's a legal definition, but I put that in plain English for you. That should clear up any confusion. Have you ever heard that term, undue influence? You might hear it from time to time. It's, is it just some weird legal thing, or should you understand it, you personally? Well, when it comes to seniors and financial abuse, the term does become very important because undue influence can readily lead to financial abuse of seniors. Now, strangely, the legal concept of undue influence is really old. I looked this up and it goes way back in history to the 1600s. You know, a lot of our law in the United States is based on what our British ancestors did, and we brought that with us when this country was founded. And sure enough, there's an old case from English law in which a woman pretended to love an older man and pressured or influenced him to give her all his money and property after he died. She didn't love him. She was married to somebody else. This was a scam. So the elderly man, under her influence, changed his will and left everything to her and not to his own family. Well, his family sued back then. She lost, and they ended up getting the estate he would have left to them if he hadn't been under the influence of this woman. And the English court found that she had used undue influence on him to get him to change his will. Well, centuries have passed, but the same problem exists today. People use their relationship with someone to get them to give money or property to the influencer. We hear about it all the time at agingparents.com, where we work with families helping them deal with issues about their aging loved ones. The struggle in families about control over an aging parent's finances often comes about because someone thinks another family member is using undue influence over a vulnerable elder. And sometimes it's true. There's a son or a daughter or an uncle or a grandchild. Somebody gets a hold of that aging person and manipulates them into changing the legal paperwork and giving money, more money or all the money, to that influencer. There are laws about undue influence, but the ver these vary from state to state. Where I live in California, we have a really good definition that helps people prove when someone was under undue influence of another person. Keeping it simple and non-legal sounding, this is the way I would express that definition, the essence of that definition of undue influence. Undue influence is excessive persuasion that causes another person to act or refrain from acting by overcoming that person's free will and results in something that isn't in the influenced person's best interests. So that's the definition. That's the conclusion of Section 1 on Undue Influence. Now that you know the meaning of the words, we'll next go to what the warning signs look like when an elder is possibly under someone else's influence. I give you these five warning signs to watch out for so that you can take action or alert authorities or do anything you can to keep that aging person safe from manipulation and possible financial abuse.
Dang it. Hello. I've been meaning to do this stream for a while. <laughs> it it keeps muting me and I don't know why. I'm sorry. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how to protect yourself from undue influence in multi-level marketing. I had just said a few seconds ago that my stream was technical difficulty free, but I wasn't because I was freaking was freaking muted. <laughs> I think you should be able to hear me now. There's a little bit of a lag because uh, the latency. So I'll just wait. Yay. <laughs> um, I had done my kind of story in Young Living and Mary Kay. And then the next stream, I kind of had explained generally what I understand undue influence to be in not the legal space, but what experts in the field talk about undue influence in um, high control groups. And today we're going to be talking again, I already said it, but how do you protect yourself from undue influence in a multi-level marketing company? It... <laughs> I have an outline and we may end up watching videos because you know I love a visual aid, but here, here we go. Uh, yeah, so live chat, you're probably maybe on a 30, 15 to 30 second delay, so sorry about that. Thank you so much. Um, hello everyone, Tatiana and Bunny and Rachel and Rosie and Christina and Kirsten. Hello, hello, and Lisa. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, I'm rocking my... I'm, I'm also keeping them... I, I, I had to order some bobby pins because I don't have any. So I'm keeping them in place with uh, my crochet hooks, which is so on brand for me. I can't even stand it. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the reason we played that... The reason I played that video is because it talks about undue influence and how it is understood in society here in the United States uh, with the law. A lot... Um, so right now, undue influence is a legal term that applies to elders who have been taken advantage of. There's people in the field who are trying to do the work to change and update the law so that undue influence um, cases don't just apply to um, elders, that they're saying that it can apply to people of any age. <sighs> Um, and I, so, so I'm going to take some liberties and basically tell y'all my hypothesis, grab some stuff from other people, experts, Stephen Hassan, um, a licensed counselor whose name is Emily Simonian. Um, and I hope this is not boring as hell. Uh, I use knitting needles to hold my hair sometimes love the idea of crochet hooks too. Yes, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's holding great. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? I don't know if this is going to be triggering at all I or, or content warning necessary. We're just going to be talking about basically how are multi-level marketing companies using undue influence to keep people in longer and what you can do to understand the signs because it's easy for us to yell on the internet react to zoom calls uh videos stories and say oh my gosh i can't believe this person is doing this this and this but that doesn't necessarily help people who don't know what to look for hello potato supreme I think I've seen your account on Instagram. I, 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 um, I haven't been keeping up with my DMs. They tried to charge my cousin as a career uh, criminal and undue influence was one of the basis for charging him as a career criminal. Oh my God. No way. That's wild. I also, I think I need to make the, um, the little subtitle subtitles not subtitles the question's bigger because when i was rereading it i know some of y'all are um maybe it's harder to see on a smaller screen so i'm going to try to make it bigger so when i i can't see i know i'm out of focus um to make it bigger so people can have an easier time reading uh, okay I probably should come up from the bottom. Sorry, Christine, I'm going to put you back up on the screen. Edit. 
I want to bottom. Great. And do I did I forget to put makeup on? Yep, sure did. Uh I was gonna stream this last night, but the Jesse Lee Ward live like literally knocked the sh what time is it? It's it's close enough. Just the shit out of me. Like it just was emotionally like this is awful. Okay. So this is this definition, we've read it before, but it's from Stephen Hassan's website. And so the first point is, what are the red flags you're looking for if there's undue influence involved in the organization you're a part of? Now, we're going to be talking about multi-level marketing, but um, Stephen Hassan talks about undue influence and how it can be a part of organizations like Terror, uh, terrorist organizations, trafficking rings, political cults, psychotherapy cults, religious cults, and commercial cults. He beat charge but is serving life anyways. I'm sorry, Christina. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to read some of the definitions. I don't know the information well enough to be able to just recite it and and look like I know what I'm talking about because I don't. I mostly just gathered the information and combined it into an outline. And I know I'm like, I'm already, <laughs> I feel like I'm already boring y'all, but I hope that this is at least helpful a little bit. Um, so undue influence is any act of persuasion that overcomes the free will and judgment of another person. We heard that in the intro video, but they're specifically using that overcoming of the person's will as it's involved in elderly individuals and um Stephen Hassan and other uh therapists are doing work to try to get that to extend um to a lot of different other groups um people can be un unduly influenced by deception flattery trickery coercion hypnosis and other techniques I know hypnosis sounds woo woo uh it's a thing. It's something that ethical licensed clinicians um, can, I hope I'm still alive, can do. Um, but I, I would not, I would not be ready and willing to have that done on me if I wasn't working with a licensed clinician. I'm going to go ahead and open up my stream chat over here so that I can add some polls in here because I'd love to get your feedback if you're enjoying the live chat and catching this on the live the live uh stream replay crew if you see the poll or the poll that I'm asking about feel free to answer in the in the comments if my stream will ever load um am i loaded yep i'm live pause okay so i'm going to add a poll Have you heard of undue influence? Yes or no? I'm going to add the uh, ask your community. So I had not heard of it until I started working for um, Stephen Hassan last year. Um, I'm not working for him anymore. I just finished my, my uh, job with him at the beginning of March. So um, a couple weeks ago, and it is twisty to learn about, if that makes sense. I have done hypnosis before the licensed person. It was very interesting. I was going to the therapist for many years. Yeah, and what I've what I've heard from others is and other um, clinicians is that he uh, that doing it with an ethical person that you trust that has had a good track record with you is. Um, the way to do it basically and in the video that we watched in the beginning with the lawyer talking about undue influence in elder law um, Stephen Hassan talks about in addition to religious cults there are psychotherapy cults political cults commercial cults terrorist organizations and trafficking rings and there are also personality cults, particularly if one person exerts undue influence over another or a small group of people, such as a family. So when you start to unpack 
your perspective about what you think mind control is, uh, undue influence and all that other stuff, it applies to, at least for me, it applied to more groups than I thought it would apply to. And it, the information is at least good to have so that you're equipped to just be aware of other things that are going on in the world. And I hope that, uh, I hope that <sighs> this is helpful. Um, here's some red flags that you can look for. And I should have had my text on the screen. Maybe I should do that. I know. I'm just, it's just a shit show. I'm going to put a text on the screen. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I am. <laughs> What's happening? Okay. Oh, no. I'm blurry. God. My, uh... Aspect, not my aspect ratio, my depth of field is quite short and I need to fix it. <laughs> um, here's the text. First red flag is the vulnerability of the victim. Whoops, I need to fix this. Hard. Um, I'm just typing real quick, sorry. And the last one I've I've kind of pivoted from maybe what it was necessarily called um okay Blah. so here's the we'll put them over here because we can read up here so vulnerability of the victim is something to watch out for it's not the issue of being vulnerable it's knowing that people take advantage and use someone's vulnerability against them that is yep exact Great example, Christina. Two examples of undue influence. One, Charles Manson. Yep. And that is, it's something to, to take into consideration and, and be self-aware enough to know um, maybe some areas that your loved ones are vulnerable or you yourself are vulnerable. Um. I know I'm probably spelled stuff wrong. Intimate and confidential relationship. It's something that people can take advantage of. And so, again, in the context of multi-level marketing, not every time, but there are so many instances where, and obviously this applies to elder care, but there's so many situations where someone gets hooked. They get lured into a multi-level marketing opportunity because they were willing to hear a pitch from a friend. That's not the case every time. There's some situations where you see a super trainer or not a super trainer, but a big coach in Beachbody or a huge seller in Mary Kay or Young Living or whatever. Um, and so it's not necessarily a close relationship, but that parasocial relationship from seeing someone online that you'd like to connect with may be a draw as well. It's just something to think about. Um, as you're navigating this. I don't know if I'm making sense right now. I'm going to end the poll. Uh, oh my god, my text. Sorry. Um, isolation from victims, uh, family, and close friends. Specifically in multi-level marketing, and while we see this in elder care, but specifically in multi-level marketing, we see the villainization of the people who may be against your opportunity. Who the um, saying that those who don't understand what it's uh, required, what is required in multi-level marketing and committing to an at-home opportunity, uh, and, and you're warned about those type of people when you're in your Zoom calls or you're in your 
uh, in-person events or you're on those one-on-one calls that they don't want you to get discouraged because you're listening to the wrong people. And so because you are initially excited about the opportunity and you don't want to fail, you're looking for any and all tips to be successful. And that can be the start of isolating yourself from your family and friends. Oh my God. Um, and, and so this, again, the number four is transfer of financial accounts and monies. This is for the elder care list, but think about this. You are required, let's say you're in Mary Kay. You have to do $250 a month um, for a, a, every quarter, at least back in, the, back in the day when I was in, you had to do $250 worth of sales or product purchased every quarter to stay active um, as a seller. Okay, but if you just wanted to be a discount customer, it was only a two hundred and fifty dollar order for the whole year, I think. And and Melissa can probably speak to this better better than I can, but um, because I've kind of blocked some stuff out. Oh my god, my text technical difficulties. We don't know you anymore. Get out of my stream. But. The commitment that you made to your friend or to the person you really admire, that you're going to be successful in your company, that you're not going to be the one not um, not having enough inventory so that customers will be taken care of. You're not going to be the one to let down the leader trying to make rank. You're not going to be what fill in the blank. So you're constantly doing the monthly orders you're listening when the team needs 50 more PV, uh, 40, 400 more PV, 150 more PV, whatever it is. PV means personal volume or volume in general um, or GV, group volume. You're, and you are loyal to that friend or that person that you think is shiny and sparkly and someone that you want to show that you're really committed to you're going to be giving more money than maybe you can sell and you do it because you're trying to help someone out (laughs) what's up root into being yes we are past the cursey countdown timer so we are cursey words are raring to go So that is the transfer of financial accounts and monies, but mostly in multi-level marketing, I think it more specifically is about uh, transferring the monies. And at the expense sometimes, if you're in more of a financially stable position slash privileged position, that you are giving money to the group, to your leader, because you're a team player, because you're not dead weight on the team, because you don't want to be the one that stops your friend from ranking up. I say this as a example, but also as someone who did that when I was in Young Living. Oh, I'm embarrassed to say that, but here I am. Um, and this one, I didn't finish typing it, but it's significant changes in how someone lives their life to... Um, make room for the for the reach of the multi level marketing company, meaning this in for undue influence of the elder care. They talk about the the estate, um, and giving it to someone else, and I look at this more. And this is just a hypothetical from someone who's not an academic. But it's putting the, the opportunity above the, uh, the emotional, mental wellness of your family. It's giving up your time to be on opportunity Zooms, on training Zooms, on power hours. It's working from your phone all day, every day, and you're, it divides and sucks your attention away from uh, your family that you care about or your responsibilities you have. It's more of, uh, and this is the last one is me guesstimating basically that 
there's some subtle subconscious ask from your leader that if you want to be successful, you better devote enough time, energy, commitment to making this work, whatever that looks like for you. But a lot of time it looks like working for free. A lot of time it looks like uh, giving up giving up prime time for the company, for the multi-level marketing opportunity, for the commercial cult. Um, I wish I had practiced this before I decided to stream it. <laughs> so number two is to how to protect yourself from undue influence in, multi in a multi-level marketing company. And I'm going to ask this in the poll. Um... Start a answer. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Would there be, are there other red flags that you would add to the list to warn people about undue influence? So I'd, I'd love to hear y'all's answers and put them on the screen so that other people can learn from you. Um... I'm going to put the question in the chat and in replay crew, feel free to answer this question in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. See viewer questions and choose which ones to answer. Okay, great. New comments. Cause I'm not being focused. Thank you, Rebecca. How are you? Okay. So while we're hopefully, Someone will answer the question. I think you may have to click on it. If you don't want to click on it, no big deal. I'm just going to go to the next section and then we'll add what y'all would want to the to the red flag list. But the second the second point is understand how to protect your um is understanding how to protect you um from the undue influence. Um brainwashing is kind of an outdated uh, psychological concept but and this is me reading on the internet but malignant narcissistic cult leaders can still exercise extreme influence over smart sane regular people and I say sane because of how many times we're told just so you know it's, if it's multiple choice I always pick C <laughs> Dave welcome the chat king is here. The the donut overlord has entered the chat. Um, there's so many times when you're listening to people who are in multi-level marketing who love the opportunity say that only unintelligent people won't join or only unintelligent people fail at network marketing. Only lazy people fail at network marketing. All of these type of <sighs> characteristics that maybe people don't want to be associated with because they want to be perceived as smart. They want to be perceived as, um, it, and I say in the right mind, I'm trying to be gentle about how I'm saying stuff, but, but it really is. Taking a taking a second to be self aware enough to say that peep all kinds of people get lured into multi level marketing. Intelligent people get lured in. Average intelligent people get lured in. Super smart people get lured in. And so to really equip yourself at least acknowledge that anybody can get pulled into a multi-level marketing opportunity. That's going to be where you're going to start out from a safer, at least a stronger foundational position to be able to assess and um, assess kind of like where you're at. And if you are thinking about joining, being able to stay in, in in control of your own faculties basically and ask the good questions and not get caught up and and get uh 
love bombed into into doing something that maybe is not in your best interest. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Where did they go? So Rachel said, I don't think I can see this. Hold on. Okay, I can't see. Uh, it, it, some of them are showing up in, on my stream and some of them are not. So Rachel said, keeping people away from others, not approved by them or a part of what they are in. Yep. And this is going back to what would we add to the red flags? That's a red flag. Gaslighting, rags to riches story, love bombing. Yep, that is a red flag. Cena, a.k.a. Potato Supreme, the group family team is so much more important than anything outside. Yep. Triangulation. Absolutely. Kirsten said, pressure to conform to be included, having to change something about your life to be accepted. Yep. And let me see if I can. Is it this one? This is the influence continuum. This is just something I made to clean up the look of it. But the right side or the right side. No, no. Okay, I guess facing y'all. <laughs> the side with the yellow slash orangey color is the destructive side of the influence continuum. And on this side with the blue, because I mirrored, it is the positive side of the influence continuum. So if I take this off, this is the whole thing. It's from the bite model. It's a range of where you, your group, or your leader can fall on this um, on this scale. So destructive unhealthy is the yellow side, and the constructive health healthy is on the the teal slash green cyan color side. So for your leaders. Are they psychologically healthy? Do they they know their own limits? They empower individuals. They're trustworthy and they're accountable. On the destructive side, they're narcissistic slash psychopathic. They're elitist or grandiose. They're power hungry. They're secretive and deceptive and they claim absolute authority. Hmm, have we heard about any of those people recently in multi-level marketing? I think yes. Oh, oh, I don't even know my own buttons. Okay, so that is, that's just, and be self-aware enough to know that all different types of people, all levels of intelligence, all, um, economic socioeconomic statuses of of individuals can get sucked into a multi-level marketing company and i think it's important to not desensitize ourselves but be aware of that so that there's less of an opportunity to get pushed into something or sucked into something that isn't healthy or good for us Yep, no criticism of leadership allowed. Zorzin, hello, everyone I missed. Auntie Scamantha, hello, hello, hello. I'm sorry I didn't say hi to everybody. Um, The next part in understanding how to protect yourself is you can... Um you can kind of uncover the warning signs of cultic mind control techniques, undue influence like we were just talking about by asking the right questions. And so from specific, if you think all of what I'm saying is woo woo, like, oh my gosh, what do you mean cult mind control? What do you mean undue influence? What do you mean someone is pushing me to do something that I wouldn't have normally done if I ha had not been in this opportunity? A good opportunity can hold up to scrutiny. A good opportunity can hold up to scrutiny. If you are getting shunned or shamed for asking questions, if you are being gaslit, if you are being, um, uh, what's the right word? 
not isolated. If you're being, if you're getting in trouble for asking question, that is certainly a red flag. It is. If you, they can't answer specifically about what you're asking about, that's a red flag. Um, hello. It's kind of a recurring series. <laughs> so I did my first stream about, I was trying to create some content where it was more informational and less reactionary so that maybe if somebody needed help or if somebody wanted to learn and it was too difficult to see me or others critiquing someone they cared about or a company they cared about that we could do that in this space and talk about tools that they either don't get sucked into an opportunity that isn't good for them or if they're already in the opportunity they get to pick up some informational pieces that help them get less taken advantage of if they decide to stay and we we did we had this list earlier let me um we had this list earlier i keep saying that we had this list so this is the list that i made about know the red flags of undue influence and we kind of meshed a list together of stuff that's in the elder care law that is what recognizes undue influence here in the United States. It's not applied to the younger crowd, basically. If you're not um, 65 and there's not certain constraints on your case, the the court system is not going to say you were a victim of undue influence. There's other countries that have more progressive laws about it, but we don't have that here. There's people um, who are trying to change the law but whenever I type in undue influence in MLMs, there's not a t there's some stuff that comes up. There's not oh my god, there's not a ton of stuff. So I'm hoping that there's just like um hey, if you want to learn about this, this is the video for you. <laughs> and it's not gonna be a oh my god. I, I was gonna say it's not gonna be a rabbit trail. I don't think I'm the right person for the job because of my freaking technical difficulties. I'm just, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm just, you know, being me. Um, destructive cults. So if we're going to go back over here, so organizations that are destructive um, would be on the, this side. I'm mirrored, so I'm looking at the wrong side. Uh, organizations, they're elite, um, they show elitism, they're authoritarian, they have an authoritarian structure. They're deceptive or manipulative. They clone people. They, the ends justify the means. They want to preserve their own power and they don't have, they don't give or believe that there are any legitimate reasons to leave. We've seen this organizational, like, um, sickness i guess in lots of multi-level marketing companies in the independent contractors downlines and in certain coaching programs good night rachel i was in one before social media nothing has changed the talk is still the same yeah there's a lot of the stuff is still the same in mary Kay too and I will not. I mean, we cover Young Living all the time, but it's just wild. But for a healthy organization on this side, which is weird, <laughs> there there's egalitarianism. There's checks and balances. There's informed consent. There's um, individual individuality and diversity. They don't want you to become part of the group and lose lose who you are as a person. The means create the end, meaning if they want a goal, but you're going to be unethical to get it, then they won't go towards that goal. Like how you get to the goal is meaningful and it matters. Again, another huge issue that I have with multi-level marketing is because they use deception to recruit people. They break rules to make claims to make their products seem better than they are to get people to buy their product and get sucked in. 
that is that is one of the signs of a an unhealthy group. Sorry, I'm getting heated because I, <laughs> I'm just I don't know. I'm get this makes me upset. Um, they encourage growth, and you're free to leave. Free to leave. It's not just your words. You don't get freaking shunned when you leave a group if the organization is healthy. You know. I don't know. I just just talking out my butt. Um, destructive cults use love bombing, isolation, and phobia indoctrination to overwhelm cognition. Meaning, and I know that y'all can understand what the words mean, but they scare you to push you into a decision. I will give you an example when I was in Young Living. They start with selling you a cleaning product and they say that this cleaning product is incredible but even more so the ingredients are incredible and not only are you going to be able to to clean your floors and windows and walls and everything it really kills germs and it's safe enough to drink why would you be drinking cleaner well what if you have kids what if they get into the cleaning cabinet and drink it you don't even have to call poison control they say that. Or you're, what if you don't have any kids? What if you have pets and you mop? Haven't you ever had to keep your, your pets off the floor because you've used bleach or whatever and you don't want their little paws to get burned? Oh, yes. Well, you should use this instead. So you bring that in. You start using it. It works. And then you start thinking, wow, this works. And these are cleaner ingredients what else in my life could i sw um, swap out heated dc is the best dc <laughs> uh yeah i i don't know i i wish i could be technically a uh, technical difficulty free dc i let's work on that <laughs> but you it's a layer by layer of there's products out there that are that work that they are not as I'm doing quotes. I'm being I'm being facetious, like uh, not facetious, but I'm being like I'm trying to be overly to show you that like <laughs> I bought into this, but they use these things to get you in deep and then scare the shit out of you. Oh, but what are you exposing your kids to? What are you exposing yourself to? What how many ingredients are you putting on your face in the morning when you're washing it and putting your makeup on? You could probably be poisoning yourself. I know that what I'm saying, if you've never been in a health and wellness MLM who's hyper-focused on cleanliness, on toxin-free living, it's going to sound like I went off in the deep end and I was not in, in charge of my logical brain. Because they, they're using phobias and they use, they go about it in a very twisty way to get you in deep and then they scare you and saying what could be causing you know an uptake in the big C why are more people getting sick why are <sighs> oh yes I will totally do that Jenny that y'all are so smart <laughs> thank you that's a great idea I'll put it in the description when I'm done that's so you're so smart I'm not love bombing you you're just so smart um and so that's one of it. That's an example of phobia indoctrination. And I'll tell you how far it took me. I was scared to, and YouTube, do not, do not take my video down. I was nervous to get um, the COVID uh, shot. That's how far I was in. I, there were days and days. Oh, no, are my graphics not showing? Oh, my other ones are, though, right? Like this one showing? I think. Let me see. Mute. I'm just going to see. Oh, my gosh. I have closed captioning on my video. How is this possible? Oh my god. Sorry, I'm 
YouTube put closed captioning on my videos. Yes. Okay, you can see that. Yes. Okay. Um, and I know like some people are like, well, how could you do that? I am the type of person. <sighs> no, you're good, Jenny. Um, I, I, I know that sounds like, how could you believe that? I believed it. I was scared. I'm also the type of person that has very strong reactions to other I'm trying not to get my video taken down. S-H-O-T-S that I've gotten from the doctor. Um, and you can say, well, what kind of reactions do you have? I have extreme um, joint pain after I get one for about four to six weeks after I will get one. Um, I, it was just, I was nervous. And... I still, I did end up getting it. I did have to go talk to my sister-in-law, who's a geneticist, be, because I wanted to talk to someone who is based in science. And there was so much stuff swirling around. And I know some people can think, wow, you're you're just a gullible type of person to not understand that this is um safe for everybody i and if you don't like me as a as a creator anymore because i'm being honest i get that my siblings also had very scary reactions when they were babies and so it was just something that was scary and so I ended up talking to her and talking through it and I got it. And I had just one of more of my like nothing long, nothing like permanent happened, which is fine. Um, I'm just telling you that the being in a health and wellness multi-level marketing company as someone who they were, they used phobia kind of indoctrination on you to get you to want to order all their products it didn't just stop at product ordering they started seeping into them their like medical care big pharma um to scare you so that you would want to use essential oils instead of going to the doctor and and I just, it, it, and I, and it's still like, I just bought my first candle after being out of young. I haven't bought any candles because we're told they're toxic. So in 2019, I, I threw out whatever candle I had, the uh, two or three I had, and I didn't buy one until about uh, maybe a month and a half ago or a month ago. And it's still, makes me nervous to light them. It's still like the sea, whatever the seeds, the information that I was exposed to in Young Living where they're scaring you about anything could be secretly poisoning you. Whether you think that that's ridiculous or not, that is my experience that happened to me. That's happened to other people specifically in the phobia category. And it, it is when you're twisting relationships with people into a business opportunity and it seeps into the, your health and wellness, your emotional health, your mental health, it starts getting it starts getting really uh it starts getting really scary. And you start making decisions or you're too afraid to make other decisions that really would be in your best interest, but it, everything's been tainted by the um, undue influence, if that makes sense. I do. I got one. <laughs> I got one, Harper. I don't know if it's going to show you. I got one. <laughs> so I haven't lit them, but I'm smelling them. <laughs> Fear sells, right? And they're so predatory. 
predatory that they capitalize on the fear in a really big way. Yep. And these people, specifically in Young Living, they're getting the shit scared out of them that they, they're they not taking their kids to the doctor. They're asking for prescriptive recommendations, um, essential oils for things, and... That's not right. And so it is, it's not only impacting the person who joins the opportunity, it's impacting the other people that may depend upon the person who's in the opportunity for their, for their health care, for their physical care, for all this stuff. Um, and it's, I'm trying to explain it in a way like, Obviously, this is my experience, and it's there's other people who have experienced other things too. It's mostly just to show you like what is used so that you don't get in the spot that I was in. If you know that a group using undue influence could use phobia, indoctrination, love bombing, and isolation, if you're aware of it, you can do a better job guarding yourself against it. If you are in a multi-level marketing company and you um, love where you're at and there's no way in hell that you're ever going to leave, that's fine. I would say this. If your upline is saying things like, just cut all the haters out of your life, cut all that negative energy out of your life, um, that's, that is, that's under the isolation umbrella. So maybe we take that recommendation with a grain of salt. If someone is scaring the crap out of you and using fear to prevent you from making a decision that you would have normally made before you would join the opportunity, maybe that is, that is a point where you can say, okay, they're trying to scare me. If I wasn't scared, would I, would I be making a different decision? And if you would, that's good to be in a place to be able to realize that and and better advocate for yourself. Hi, Heather. As a longtime physical health advocate, advocate, this is what brought me to anti-MLM. Yep. Everyone has limitations. Everyone has some weak spots. Toxic positivity can make us unaware of our own weak spots. Yep. And, and, um, I was going to say something, but then I got nervous. Andy said, this is how Herbalife almost got me. I was very vocal about the sugar and everything and how fast food was bad. They showed me a McDonald's burger under glass that had been in there for years and not aged. Yep. They used my fear of bad food. Okay. Sorry, I'll read it in a second. And Q&A. Here we go. They used my fear of bad food to try and convince me to join and eat their shakes because they are so much better than that nasty junk food. Yep. There are, according to this, um, she has a master's and she's a licensed uh, mental health professional, but she did say certain personality traits don't make you more vulnerable to cults. And that's good to know because you're thinking, or I think there's something broken in me if I have joined multiple multi-level marketing companies and that's not the case and there are multi-level marketing there are pro multi-level marketing advocates who would say that um if you weren't successful something's wrong with you and there's something wrong with the business model there's something wrong with the business model because more people have to lose so that a few people can win um Situational factors like loneliness and uncertainty can increase your recruitment risk. So that's good to know. It's not, it, we're not villainizing loneliness. We're not villainizing uncertainty. The thing is, 
to take that information, maybe file it away. So at, if you're in a situation where you're more vulnerable and you're thinking to yourself, maybe this is a good opportunity for me. You can take a step back and say, if I wasn't lonely right now, would I be making the same oppor- would I be making the same decision? And sometimes it's hard to be able to take a step back and logically process through um, process through situations. But I hope at least <laughs> that there's some semblance of logic in this and that it helps people to better guard against getting sucked into something that they wouldn't want to do. I'm just reading the comments. Um, (laughs) Dave said, Andy, I saw that. So gross. That's why I'm a Burger King kind of guy. It's healthy, right? Dave, I'm pretty sure you can eat whatever you want. (laughs) Uh, and Andy said, Dave, haha, ha, totally. Yep, I love that. That's awesome. Oh no, I'm paused. Okay. All right. The next, this is it's still in category two. I'm be- feeling like I didn't bring enough pictures for this. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a better. I'm just listen. I'm just in my head reacting to myself like, where is, where's her visual aids? I don't know. I didn't bring enough of them. I've got these. I'm just going to show the influence continuum again while I look at my notes. This, again, this this chart is written out on Stephen Hassan's website. I just remade it for my for my stream because I I wanted to. But you can see where your own group falls on the influence continuum. Not all influence is destructive. Some of it is constructive. Some of it is healthy. And some of it is not. Um, And I guess my last point for section two (laughs) is um, knowledge and awareness can empower people to resist psychological coercion. Knowledge and awareness. You don't have to be a super intelligent person. You don't have to be a super confident person. You don't have to be what you would think of like, oh, I'm susceptible. If you can increase your knowledge and awareness, you can prevent and resist psychological coercion. And that's good. I think that, and, and, and Steve says this better than me, people deserve to be able to make decisions for themselves that are unadulterated by somebody else's negative or unhealthy influence. People's minds deserve to be free. And in a lot of the Zoom calls I watch and react to, in uh, the training videos I've seen, in my own personal experiences... The destructive side of influence, the negative side, is it continues to um, taint and twist the decisions that people make. And I hope that more people speak up about it. There's tons of great creators. I'm actually going to link Heather in the live chat. I'm going to link other people. Nightbot should be putting Heather's link in there. Um... I don't remember who else is here in the chat. I should not be getting nervous, but I am. Um, okay. So there's 10 warning signs of cult recruitment. And I say cult, um, a destructive authoritarian group. It's not bad to be part of a group where you do things together, where maybe you pool your money to do something you want to do and go on trips. It's not bad to be part of a healthy group. And a lot of times when we've le- when we've left these destructive groups, you don't want to be a part of any group because they don't really feel, at least for me, they didn't feel safe. Um, 
And I'm talking about this in a very mild sense because obviously nothing like there was no physical trauma or a traumatic event that happened to me in Young Living, if that makes sense. It, when you're in when you're a part of a um, destructive slash abusive marriage, when you're a part of a um, destructive, abusive like doomsday group or a religious group where stuff where awful things happen to people, I'm I'm just talking a G rated uh, for my own experience is saying more of an academic like an academic perspective, it feels not, I'm not excited about trying to figure out a new group to be a part of. Yeah. And, and, and after being in an MLM and you want things to be clear cut, Amber, what's up? Thank you. I, they're get they're being held in place by my cro crocheting needles. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm 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 allowed to be on the internet, but here we are. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I like them. They're a little quirky, and I'm quirky. So, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to do my best. I it, I am a little bit uh not confident, which I know that comes across as it distasteful sometimes on stream. I'm trying to figure this out of learning how to speak clearly and logically and uh, not have too many technical difficulties and overcome the like negativeness that I think about myself because I like streaming. I like the live chat. Y'all are always so nice and um, I got to figure it out. <laughs> A million streams later, we're still figuring it out. So. Um, so 10 warning signs of cult recruitment or destructive authoritarian group recruitment, social isolation, cyber isolation, promised rewards. That one flags all the time with multi-level marketing opportunities, phobia, indoctrination, heightened emotion. If you look at those large group awareness trainings at Tony Robbins events or even how um, they're used at these conventions where there's lots of emotion, there's lack of sleep, there's uh, all these highs going on. That is that is one of those things that's playing into this. <sighs> Love bombing. And it's hard to describe love bombing because... It's at least hard to describe it for me because... I genuinely, if I feel brave enough, want to be nice and speak good things to people to encourage them. Love bombing to me is interacting with someone that you wouldn't have naturally felt inclined to say something good to in order to get something from that person. So if you're trying to compliment someone just because you want to be a nice person, that's different than love bombing them because there's always an ulterior motive with love bombing. You want to keep them in the group longer. You want to get them into the group. I say group. The relationship, the downline, whatever that is, you're trying to... um get them to order more you're trying to get them to recruit more you're trying to get them to stay longer stuff like that I think there has to be so, and I'm sure a live chat or replay crew y'all have a really good definition of love bombing and I'd love I'd love to see that or he, or or see what y'all have to say too thank you Amber um Here's, here's something I'm going to say, write this down. We're going to write it for you because I'm not an asshole. Okay. Here's five. One, two, three. There's five things to note about when you can be most vulnerable. Okay. I'm going to type. <laughs> should I have had this ready before I streamed? Yes. I know the, the tyranny of the shoulds. Okay. 
Oh, dang it. I didn't do the hard, the soft return. Uh... I should have into, like added background music. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay. Here we go. There we go. Okay. These are when you're the most vulnerable. If you are just listening to this, I will read it off for you, but it's in the top uh, left-hand corner of my video, and it's white text on top of a dark green window that is trees and a pretend rainy scene. But when you're the most vulnerable, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling uncertain, when you're feeling spiritually unfulfilled or dissatisfied, or slash and you distrust authority institutions and the mainstream the here's the thing it it is not something like oh my gosh i'm not going to tell anybody that i'm lonely depressed or uncertain because then they're going to know i'm vulnerable no this is about empowering you and making you more aware it's more of Knowing what to watch out for to be able to potentially avoid a collision. It's it's more knowing, hey, maybe if it is raining and icy out, I need to be a little more watchful when I'm driving. It, it means like, <sighs> what am I trying to say? It's just knowing, hey, you know what? If I'm feeling really lonely right now, I might not be making the best decisions Um I might, not that I'm not, I might be prone to make decisions that are not advocating for me in a way that is healthy long term, okay? And so if you are going to, oh, great one, or when you're going through a major life change, I'm adding that to the list right now. When you're going through I love that, Jenny. Okay, I added it to the list. Oh, I only have one period on there. That's okay. Um, I will tell you this. And <laughs> bye, Dave. Um, a narcissistic relationship. Yep. And most, from what I understand, from what I've read, from experts in the field a lot of time a th destructive authoritarian group leaders are malignant narcissists because narcissism itself does not make you a bad person it doesn't mean that you're going to make destructive decisions that harm others there's lots of productive members of society who are narcissists. It's the issue is not that there's narcissism in the world. It's the malignant narcissists, in my opinion, that are doing the destructive stuff. And I don't know. I know I don't really talk about uh, diagnosing people on my channel. I try not to, but... I'm trying to relay information from experts, and that is what I've read. People, people tend to blame the person instead of the environment when someone joins a cult. They're like, oh, you were weak. Oh, you were lonely. Oh, you were whatever. And, it, and again, it's more about the perfect storm. It's more about like all the stuff coming together. Um this is a common bias called the fundamental attribution error. And I'm going to be doing a series with Amy called uh, The Fallacy Detective. It's a book for 12 and up. And uh, I'm over 12, so it's a kid's book, but it helps you understand logical fallacies. And, I, um, and I'm going to do that. 
I don't know, Jenny, from what I understand, there's a guy on YouTube who is a narcissist and he's in therapy, but he has very little like emotion or not emotion in general, but like when he um, does things that are selfish that hurt others, he doesn't feel bad about it. I I don't know exactly. You'll have to watch him or I'm not, I'm sure I'm not explaining this correctly. So if someone can redirect me in the, in the comment section, I'd appreciate it. Um, there's no reliable personality that's more gullible to cult recruitment. There, there's not like, oh my gosh, uh, maybe, maybe a more of a people pleaser type person, maybe more, uh, and this is just a guess. It's not based off of any study. If you are more of a type of person who tries to not calm things over, but if you have a high, what is it called? There's a personality trait on the big five, but I can't remember it because I'm nervous, but it's so, but she is saying, and this is a, she has a master. She's saying there's no reliable personality that's more gullible to cult recruitment. Cults even adjust their methods towards different people's desires, like a great marketing team. We've seen this in the empire. We've seen this in Beachbody. We've seen this in Young Living. We've seen this in all those trainings where they tell people how to specifically target their posts for different personality types. So they are doing their best to be appealing to as many people as possible. I would say, and I'm saying this to myself maybe more than I'm saying it to the audience, but be kind to yourself if you are here watching this and you're in a multi-level marketing company and maybe you regret your decision. Agreeableness. Oh my God. The live chat saves the day. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) Agreeableness. And again, that's just a hypothesis on my part. That's not backed up by any kind of, um, when you, that's just me saying like, maybe it's this. There's no tests that have been done that they are going to interview people who have left cults or terrorist organizations or religious cults or um, doomsday cults or whatever and said, okay, we're going to classify you into this cult and can you please tell us your experience? That I don't think there's anything like that. Um. I think that it is a potentially a hypothesis that maybe people who are in, higher in agreeableness are potentially more likely to join a multi-level marketing company. Um, but that's just a guess. That's not based on any kind of information. And it looks like it directly contradicts what I'm reading from this expert. So... There are situational factors that can make people more receptive to the system. <laughs> and we, we, we kind of read that when you're feeling lonely, depressed, uncertain, spiritually unfulfilled or dissatisfied, you distrust authority institutions and the mainstream. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a good way to combat this. At least number five, when you distrust authority institutions and the mainstream, there's so much of that that happened in 2020. There's so much that happened with a large groups of people. And I talked about it earlier with the shot, you know, um, educating, empowering, and being more aware of how, um, how organizations, how government organizations, how the law works, as opposed to getting caught up in being scared in what you're reading um, from companies that have to be able to pay their bills by people clicking on links. It's, it is, how does our justice system work? Or at least I'm in, a, I'm in the United States right now. How does the justice system work? How does the government work? How do the powers interact? How does, how does the constitution direct power? How does, how does our state government work? How 
how are and equipping yourself to know okay this is normal and this is the next process and being able to say if something happens this is next okay that is happening so there's not some big huge thing going on um like a scandal or not a scandal but like not some conspiracy theory it's more of a level-headed approach i'm I, i'm trying to say this but it's uh, i don't know i'm not gonna say i don't know i'm just trying to think through this and talk through this um this is the last part of what emily kind of and i was just taking notes of what she had written but on exit counseling and, and what she had written but she says that we're all vulnerable to assaults on our minds because we're social animals with certain cognitive proclivities. But you can resist extreme influence by educating yourself, asking the right questions, and not feeling guilty or ashamed for being human. And that, as I've been reading a ton of stuff, not that it means anything. It's just me reading and learning and trying to increase my knowledge about this stuff because I don't want to get sucked into another multi-level marketing company. But not feeling guilty or ashamed for being human, that was a big one for me. And it might be it might be a big deal for someone watching this video in the future. Um Sometimes avoiding cult recruitment is as simple as delaying your response to invitations. During that time, you can do the following. You can recognize that you have emotional needs and that's okay. And that has been a process for me to shadow what's up we're 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 making the most of oh, the most lists right now <laughs> oh my god um ask yourself if these emotional needs are being manipulated you know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna put this on the screen copy okay am i is this gonna work is this gonna be another technical difficulty uh okay add paste oh no why are we not we're not the right uh um sorry okay yes pretty close recognize that you have emotional needs and that's okay this is what emily wrote ask yourself if those emotional needs are being manipulated identify an opposing message or a neutral message. Compare different sources of information. Reach out to your support network. And remember that you are an autonomous individual with the personal freedom to choose your affiliations. And I'm just going to do a soft return real quick. Oops. Um, I can't do a soft return with the personal. Okay. Whoops. Dang it. I'm just going to make this. Will this grow for me? Of course it will. I think this is a good. Oh my God. Ecamm. I'm almost done. I got rid of my bullet point. <laughs> I will I'm going to put these in the description after the stream. But if you are in a multi-level marketing company or let's say you're being recruited by one, wait 48 hours to sign up for something. If you're excited, the opportunity is just going to be as good in 48 hours as it's going to be right now. I know that there's many creators who um are going to say Multi-level marketing is bad and wrong and just don't don't join an MLM. 
I have more of a, an approach that I don't think I'm going to be able to stop people from joining multi-level marketing companies. I hope that's the case in the future, but but I more than just being able to say, well, I prevented this person from joining an MLM, I would love to be able to provide information that you can have access to that helps you advocate for yourself, protect your mind, and be able to make the best decisions you can with whatever you decide to do. And this list is pretty good. Ask yourself, recognize that you have emotional needs and that's okay. Sometimes joining a multi-level marketing opportunity isn't just about the money. It's about the community. And that's okay to want to be around people. And life is lonely sometimes. We move around all the time. It gets lonely. And humans are, um, we have emotional needs. And that's okay. And um, ask yourself if these, those emotional needs are being manipulated. If you tell someone that you are lonely or you're struggling with loneliness and they say, well, we have the best community and you're going to feel so welcomed here. And for the low, low price of whatever the price is, you can be a part of the opportunity too. That's a manipulation. It's a manipulation because there is a barrier of entry that involves money. And they're saying how incredible it is that you too can be a part of it if you just pay. Yep. Yep. Great point, Jenny. Compare, uh, identify an opposing message or a neutral message. So if you say, is this company the only opportunity that I would have access to make new friends? No. Where, where could you make a new friend? I don't know the correct answer to that because I <laughs> I have some online friends, but uh, I, I, I think there's lots of opportunities to at least write down a neutral or opposing message to what someone is pitching you. And then compare different sources of information. This one is huge. Do your research on the product. What's it going to hurt to wait 48 hours to read up a little bit about the company, the person who started it, the person who's running it, and and if the product does what it says it's going to do and if someone is saying a product can do something does it follow the rules of the FTC if it doesn't you got some you got some questions that they get to answer questions are not offensive yep then you join and you're like WTF yep shadow Reach out to your support network and I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend like everyone has a support network. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have a shitty family and you have no friends and it's super lonely. I would say that if you are, have coworkers who are kind at work, you can talk through things maybe with them. If you... There's lots of information available online that you can read, which is not the same as, as a support network. I understand that. Um, if you have a therapist, you can talk about it with. I know not everyone has access to a therapist. I don't have great answers for that one, but I'm just thinking that I, I think that all of these are really good options to help filter and if your idea of wanting to join is still as strong after you've gone through this entire list, you're more prepared than you were 48 hours earlier. And if you're going to join, okay, but at least you've gone through all of these. You've regulated your emotions. You haven't short-circuited your infrastructure and, you know, you're... <laughs> You've shorted out your your feelings. You get to look through all of these. And, and, and again, remember, when you start dressing like everybody else in your MLM or you're told that 
you all need to look a certain way or do a certain thing on social media, remember this last bullet point. Remember that you are an autonomous individual with the personal freedom to choose your affiliations. You don't have to be a part of any group that you don't want to be. What's up, Erica? They do FOMO. Yep, they sure do. Oh, this is, this is incredible. Many workplaces have an employee assistance support line you can call. That's amazing. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome. I'm going to take my list down. And I will make sure to put this at the end. Um, the, the next few bullets, it, wait, they're, they're shorter. <laughs> the, the number three to protect yourself against undue influence in multi-level marketing companies is get informed about MLMs in general and their business models. When, when you are on that recruiting call and the upline or the person leading the call is saying that now this is really complicated. I don't know how it works, but I just get paid and that's good enough. That is not. That is not good enough. It's not good enough. It is not good enough. And here's why. You understanding the compensation structure is incredible. It's an incredible tool for you to advocate for yourself. If I had understood the compensation structure in Mary Kay in a better way, I would not have stayed in as long as I did. And I would not have um, continued to replenish my inventory at the expense of me paying myself because it would have taken some of the power and influence out of my upline telling me that stars earn cars and having a full inventory is going to help you take care of your customer and blah, 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 blah. Because guess what? And I will say this is the case for most, not all, but most multi-level marketing companies. Every time you order for the from the company, your upline gets a commission. And you say to yourself, well, they deserve a commission. Do they deserve a commission when you haven't sold anything yet? Oh, well, they've spent a lot of time with me. Oh, okay. They're required to based off of the contract they sign with the, cus the company that you are an independent contractor with. It doesn't say that you have to sell stuff for them to be in contact with you. They, in my, in my, in a perfect world, if MLMs were fixed, no upline would get paid until sales were submitted at the end of the month. Like regular sales positions. Oh, Jenny. <laughs> oh. Hope you have a good night's sleep. And it'll be here on the replay if you want to catch the rest of it. And uh, yeah. But, under, but understanding how the compensation structure works because... When your upline is pushing for y'all to buy gifts for your whole family, even though you know your family doesn't like whatever multi-level marketing product you have, but you're told they make great Christmas presents, they get paid on everything you buy. My upline and Mary Kay got paid off of my thousand, thousands and thousands of dollars of inventory I purchased when I first started the company. I had not sold one thing yet. And you may be saying, well, did she help you learn how to sell? I was part of a lot of Zoom calls. And my upline did help me do my first party. But why would she not have just gotten paid off of what I sold, not what I had ordered from the company? Because the compensation structure is broken. They just have to be good enough to convince you to buy volume from the company and they get paid. They meaning your upline. This may be harsh. This may be hard for some people to hear who are watching this. Uh, you understanding that protects you. It protects you from overbuying. It protects you because you don't get caught up in wanting to help your upline hit their rank. Because you know they're going to get paid off of everything you buy. And I would say this. 
not every multi-level marketing company fits the definition, the legal definition. And maybe someone was saying there's no legal definition for a pyramid scheme. I mean, there's, I know there's cases that have gone through that are saying that this company is a pyramid scheme or whatever. And I know that Advocare had to restructure for being a pyramid scheme. So I don't know if that's necessarily an, an FTC or an, okay, a uh, legal definition of pyramid scheme. I just don't know if it's illegal. A pyramid scheme is a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting. So it's type of fraud. So it's, that's what it is. I'm guessing a legal business model where investment returns are typically from principles or investments of, or membership fees. Not all of them. Again, I say this, I know this is an unpopular opinion, I think the compensation structure is ultimately broken in most, if not all, multi-level marketing companies. Not all of them are pyramid schemes. And um, on Pink Truth, they say it the best. They believe that Mary Kay is a product-based pyramid scheme. And I know if you're thinking about that, well, a lot of these companies get around being a pyramid scheme because they sell products but they are still meeting some of the same they're doing the same behavior that other that another company would have gotten in trouble with but they have a product so they're okay and i i say all that allegedly i'm not trying to I'm not trying to make any claims i just after participating in several systems and seeing that all of the twistiness that happens Understand what a pyramid scheme is, and then if you're in your situation and behavior starts happening that matches some of that, it's a red flag. It's a red flag. It is something that you can understand so that you can protect yourself from undue influence in multi-level marketing companies. Be, oh, be aware of high-pressure sales tactics. Those can look a lot of different ways. Someone continually texting you saying that the best time to get in is right now. Well, is right now the 28th of the month and you have to finish out the month at a certain volume so that you can hit your rank? That's a high pressure sales tactic saying that there's not going to be another sale like this for a long time. You're going to get such a good discount on all these products and it's not going to be here next month. And then next month rolls around and it's there again. Being pressured into making a huge financial decision is a no. And if someone's doing it to you, be aware of it. Just be aware of it. Um, there are consumer protection groups. And there are some type of authorities like that you can get involved with in trying to help get some of these on someone's radar. Um, because of the twistiness of undue influence as, as it applies to people who are younger and a lot of time the elder care is the only, uh, law practice that uses undue influence right now here in the United States, we've been reporting non-compliant health and wealth claims to the FDA and the FTC, they've taken action against some um, distributors and some companies. The attorney general of certain states have gone, have slapped some of the multi-level marketing companies. Um, the attorney general of Florida, I think, was working with Chelsea Suarez um, about a Monate issue. And I think uh, you'll have to watch her channel for it, but there's... We're, we're trying to find better ways to, if there is behavior that is breaking compliance and the companies aren't doing anything about it, then we escalate it. And a lot of times we escalate first and then email the companies about what's going on. But it's, it's, it's hard to say... Well, don't just don't join an MLM. Don't let your family join an MLM. There's and my dad and I, my dad streams with me sometimes. 
he gave some ideas about how to ask questions in a gentle way if someone is dead set on joining a multi-level marketing company and has joined and some ways that you can without a without an ulterior motive ask them kind questions and really listen um and one of the one of the examples was hey how how is your opportunity go how is your whatever multi-level marketing opportunity going and they say oh yeah it's great and some specific questions you can ask is um is it are you getting to do some of the things that you wanted are you hitting some of the goals you had for yourself when you joined your bit your company and they can say well maybe or or yes and and i'll try to find the video that my dad and i did that on because it was really good because a lot of times i get stuck i get stuck when i don't want to Oh, <laughs> and I'm, I'm new to your channel. I assumed you were an anti-MLM or that was never part of an MLM. You're so no-nonsense that I couldn't believe you actually bought in. Yep, twice. Twice. Mary Kay Cosmetics and Young Living Essential Oils. It is, it's so twisty. But yes, I was in. I was in. And I got out of Young Living last year and then I started making videos about a month later. And uh, I was actually in Aaron, Aaron Bees' Discord for I don't know four or five months before I left Young Living because I was like I don't know what I'm doing but I just kind of want to hang out y'all seem nice and they let me ask a ton of questions and it was it was good um so I think that's all I have those those main points about protecting yourself from undue influence in multi-level marketing um I think one of the best things is empower yourself with knowledge, understand what you're joining, what you're getting into. There there are two of the cultiest ones. I know. <laughs> I'd say I'm okay with it, but I'm still trying to work through it cuz I'm, I'm I'm a little I know I was like be kind to yourself and on the other hand I'm like I'm still embarrassed, you know. So, um there it, how am I going to wrap this up? If you make a decision that... Or if you're not aware if you're being unduly influenced in the group that you're a part of, there's lots of resources that you can look at that can measure the group that you're in. So if you're in an organization, over here on the orange side is the destructive side. That cults can fall into on here on the blue side it's the positive or healthy side of influence influence is happening whether you want it to or not being aware of the influence is the first step in having a free mind and i want my hope and again my hope is that people who watch this who feel like they're wanting to join an MLM, they can protect themselves from the undue influence that is apparent in every single MLM that I've ever reviewed in the two MLMs that I was a part of. It's in most groups. It's either on the positive side of influence or it falls on the negative side. And this is for organizations. And then you can look at leaders and then you can look at individuals. And this is the whole, the bite model, behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. And this is the influence continuum scale or whatever. Um, but it's measure your group for yourself. And... The more information you have, the better you're going to be able to feel empowered and equipped to advocate for yourself. And that's what I want. I want people who 
are stuck in MLMs to be able to get out if they want to. I want people who are happy in MLMs to stop using deceptive recruiting in business and uh, health claims to grow their businesses. I would love for, you know, like in a perfect world, I would love for the companies to not take advantage of their independent contractors and then put people at the top of the pyramids to take more advantage of their independent contractors. I think it's bro- it's inherently broken, but not but. I think it's inherently broken, full stop. I hope that because the internet's so powerful that you can find the information, get the specific answers that you're looking for, and not get taken advantage of. Hello, Sky. <laughs> I was like, what day is it? No, you're good. I We were just, it, it, it. this stream I've been trying to do for several weeks, and I finally was like, we're doing it. We got to finish this. So that's, I don't have a really good roundup. Um, I wanted to do this stream because multi-level marketing companies are notorious for being an option um, for people and those people are sucked in because they want to be able to make money and the multi-level marketing companies come with so many risks and undue influence is in my opinion the big one of the biggest dangers because it keeps you sucked in it keeps you shelling out more money and at your own detriment a lot of times you are paying more out at the detriment of your you or your family or whatever that is. So I hope that this kind of covered undue influence a little bit, It that it helped maybe spot it or at least covered it a little bit to where you can go and research it on your own and what to do if you think you are um, affected by it. So, <gasps> oh, Critical Role. I, I'm starting to like rewatch it, but I was, I love their streaming setup. I think they're great. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the stream, you're incredible. I will take a pity like, or if you didn't like the stream, Tell me what you didn't like about it in the comment section because it's both, it's either one's helpful. Uh, Replay crew, much and on culty love to you. And um, live chat. Annie, we're just finishing up, but thank you for hopping in. I love your cat. Uh, I need to like have a roundup, a roundup saying at the end, but I don't. I just have an outro though. So thank you for joining. And I will catch you on the next live stream where we're kind of covering and doing more informational type of videos so that it can be a resource that maybe is not going to, maybe would be more receptive to people who are thinking about getting out or on the fence about getting in. And I didn't want to react to anything to make it a safer spot for people to listen. So... Thank you and good night or good day or whenever you're watching this. Goodbye. Oh, where's my outro?